Well, 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 good afternoon, evening, night, morning, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. It is so good to be back on my social media family to be on with you today. Amen. Any day above ground truly is a good day. Hallelujah. I am excited. Y'all just get, as soon as I hit this button, y'all just sets me off. To know that the Lord told me to come out and to share some scriptures for today. A word from him with you. It just sets me off despite of how I was feeling. <coughs> Excuse me. Amen. So I hope all is well with each and every one of you. I hope that um, you've been still striving to represent the Lord well. And all that you say, think, and do. I hope that you have... Um, that you are strengthening your relationship. I hope that you are truly forgiving others and forgiving yourself. I hope that you are truly learning how to love others and love yourself. But you love yourself first so that you can love others. Amen. And I hope that many of you are still being obedient and where you were disobedient. You will go back and pick up that thread and get it right. Amen. So. It's time to get cracking. I've really missed y'all. I tell you, I tell you, it has been wonderful. These allergies, I have seasonal allergies. And this tickle <coughs> every time. So I'm not even going to, you know, we're not even talking about anything else. But um, I'm just glad to be alive. I'm glad for you to be alive and well. Because many didn't wake up today. Amen. But thank God that you did. And for those of you that may have woke up and started your day and didn't even say thank you to the Lord or say, good morning, Lord. How are you doing today? I need you to stop what you're doing and tell God, good morning, Lord. How are you doing today? Amen. But <clears throat> we're not even going to go through all of this to this morning. Because I'm going to get out these scriptures for y'all today. Thus said the Lord. Amen. So, before I get started with my scripture for today and try not to belay the hour with any of you, I'm just excited, I tell you. It's just God, God is just, he's awesome. I know some of you can't seem to understand and rationalize that because you keep focusing on all that is going on in the world when you're supposed to be just passing through the world. Amen. Some of you keep focusing too much even on family and friends when you are supposed to know your purpose for them in your lives and you in their lives. Amen. So for that being said, before I get into discussion of the scriptures, hold up stuff coming up. Wait a minute. Let us pray first. Amen. Heavenly Father, I come again, Lord God, I thank you for allowing me to come again with my social media family right now. Lord God, I thank you for every life under the sound of my voice, those that will be joining and those that may view this video later, Lord God. Lord God, now I decrease so you can increase in me. Have your way, Lord, on this platform. Lord, this word, these scriptures that you and I have been discussing, Lord God, use me however you see fit to share them and to let it infiltrate and penetrate the spirits and the minds of your people to draw them closer unto you so that they can be all what you created them to be in the name of Jesus. Let whatever it needs to do, cut where it needs to cut, heal where it needs to heal, and deliver where it needs to deliver. Now, Lord God, have your way for everything was made by you for you. I decrease so that you can increase and always let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight because you are my strength and my redeemer and I turn it all over to you. Lord, I love you with all my heart, mind, and soul, and it is none like you. Show up mightily right now in the name of Jesus, and I give you all the praise and honor and glory for it now. In Jesus' name, my ears is to your lips. In Jesus' mighty and awesome name, amen, amen, amen. These scriptures for today I come sharing with you, but I titled this, Can You Truly Accept When the Lord Say No? Oh, shucks. Oh, I know y'all thought I came off. Well, yeah, I, I am excited. Y'all are like, okay, maybe, maybe this is going to be a... Can you truly accept 
when the Lord say no. So these are scriptures slash words from the day. I know Holy Spirit. He said, take your time. He said, he said, decrease so I can increase. So take your time. Amen. Can you truly accept when the Lord say no? Some of you, when the Lord tell y'all no, y'all can't accept it. Some of you think that once you've gotten saved, that every time you go into prayer, that God's supposed to go along with everything that you say. And God's supposed to do everything you ask him. Some of you think God's supposed to heal because you say heal. God's supposed to deliver you out of a certain season because you said deliver. God supposed to set free because you said set free. Can you really, truly accept when God says no? Amen. Let's go to our key scripture. But before we go, to, um, let me read the key scripture. But then I want to read you some things about the book of Acts. Amen. So, as always, y'all know for those. Oh, and hello to my new followers. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I have some new followers. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm looking forward to the journey or however God has connected us and whatever your purpose is in my life and mine's in yours. Amen. All right. Now get your Bibles out, your devices out. Go with me to the book of Acts chapter six, verses four through nine. My pastor this morning gave this word. God used him mightily to infiltrate this and then God said go he said now because Acts is about action the book of Acts is about action and so even during my time of fasting the Lord allowed me he said break from he said I'm always with you now go I love it when God shows up through people and it's right on time amen so I dedicate this these scriptures and words you know because we were just so linked today and the the message just came right on. I had to hurry up and write down what God said to bring to his people. Amen. So I just wanted to say that and give a shout out to my pastor. And I thank him and I thank Lady Dion, you know, for their patience with me and their guidance. Amen. So the book of Acts, let's go with me to the book of Acts. And for those of you that may be joining and some of you that may be joining late, and uh, could you please put, I, I know I put it in my post, but still put it in the comment section in case someone reads real fast and they miss it. But I don't want no one to miss these tools and get them. Amen. So we're in the book of Acts chapter 16 verses 4 through 9. Y'all know I'm reading it from the Amplified Version. Amplified Version, I'm telling you, don't even play no games with it. It's, it's a lot of other version, but the amplifier, you can't even hem pick. Either you're going to do, it breaks it down so, you know, right to the point a child can accept it. Amen. Acts chapter 16, verses 4 through 9, the amplified version says, As they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decrees decided on by the apostles and elders who were in Jerusalem for the churches to observe. So the churches were strengthened in the faith, and they continually increased in number day by day, day after day. Now they passed through the territory of Fig Figra and Galatia after being forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word. I'm going to say that again. After being forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in the West Coast province of Asia, Minor, and after they came to Mysa, they tried to go into Bethina. Bethina, I think I pronounced it right. But the spirit of Jesus did not permit them. So pass, so passing by Messiah, then down, then um, they went down to Troas. Then a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man from the Roman province of Macedonia was standing and pleading with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. I'm going to hit that again. Y'all really need to have an ear to hear what thus said the Lord. Can you truly accept when God says no? Right here. As they traveled 
from town to town, they delivered the decrees decided by the apostles and elders who were in Jerusalem for the churches to observe. So the churches were strengthened in faith and they continually increased in numbers day by day. Now they passed through the territory. Here we go with these names again. I know I'm messing them up for Gaia and Galatia after being forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in the West Coast province of Asia Minor. And they went came from Messiah. They tried to go into Beth Bethania, but the hope, but the spirit of Jesus did not permit them. So passing by Messiah, they went down to Troas. Then a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man from the Roman province of Macedonia was standing and pleading with them, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Amen. Let me read you something about the book of Acts. Acts is a book of action. I'm going to say it again. Acts is a book of action. Notice it's called Acts, not react. Amen. It is about the initiative and the actions of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the disciples who formerly were cowardly, unsure, and ignorant. Those men who had learned to follow Jesus for three years were now learning to lead. In the sequel of his gospel, Luke reports that those early disciples mobilized the church so effectively that they reached entire cities and saturated whole countries with the gospel. The action described in this book shows God's empowering men and women who decide to stand for God with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say it again. The action described in the book of Acts, family, shows God's empowering, empowering men and women who decide to stand for God with the Holy Spirit. They determine to be influencers. Despite their lack of human qualification, they begin to penetrate their society. God accomplished this primarily through ordinary people with little in the way of education, polit political clout, or prestige. I'm going to say that again. God accomplished this primarily through ordinary people with little in the way of education, political clout, or prestige. The fisherman, Peter becomes the leader of the church in Jerusalem. Philip becomes the first evangelist and missionary to cross culture groups. Stephen takes a stand against the false religious leaders of his day and becomes the first martyr. Barnabas and Paul established the first equipping sending church in Antioch, then led the first mission team. Amen. These leaders accomplish so much because they are governed by the priorities of God, incarnated the power of God, are motivated by the purposes of God, stay dependent on the provision of God, and equip the people of God. I'm going to say that again about those leaders because we're going gonna, we're gonna to see the difference between the leaders then and the leaders now. These leaders accomplish so much. And then some of you wondering why you're not accomplishing much leaders is because they are governed by the priorities of God, incarnated the power of God, are motivated by the purpose of God. They stay dependent on the provision of God and they equip the people of God. Everyone gets involved in the task. I got to say that again. Holy Spirit, say hit that again. Because we're going to get to this elephant that's on the social media line. Amen. I'm going to have to beat this horse with a stick. I'm going to have to grab this tiger by the tail. Again, these leaders, Paul, Peter, Philip, Stephen, these leaders accomplish so much because they are governed by the priorities of God. The incarnated the power of God are motivated by the purpose of God and they stay dependent on the provision of God and equip the people of God. Everyone gets involved in the task. Leaders equip followers and cheer on the church as she marches into the culture. Leaders equip the followers and cheer on the church as she marches into into the culture. 
that's when miracles break out. The community takes care of outstanding personal needs. So some of you need to go back and revisit the book of X. Because as you read through the book, note how many leaders emerge from within the church. Many are not apostles. We were considered most lay people. Yet everyone seems committed to the vision of impacting the world of Christ. It's hot in here already. And this is just a scripture for today. We in the book of Acts. Some of y'all need to go there. It's about action. Some of y'all giving a lot of lip service. A lot of lip service. And ain't doing nothing for the people. You are not governed by the priorities of God. Incarnated the power of God. Are motivated, you are not motivated by the purposes of God. You don't stay dependent on the provision of God. And you do not equip the people of God. Some of you need to reevaluate your calling. Some of you say you are a pastor, a apostle, a prophet, a evangelist, a minister. If you are not doing this. Are you really leading the people or you just want people to follow you just to puff you up? Amen. Do you really care about who God is and what God is trying to get you to see about you? Or are you selfish within the ministry field? I'm just saying. I ain't scared. I heard the Holy Spirit. I'm saying, I'm talking to him. I'm like, you want me to say what? Yep, I ain't scared. I'm from Baltimore. I ain't scared. Amen. We are in the end times. Some of you have gone. We see in certain cities lawlessness. Some of you have followed. And <clears throat> some of you have turned your ministry into lawlessness. Y'all letting anything go. Some of you are not disciplining your, your people like they should be. You're not even directing them in the way that they should go. You ain't even laying down God's law no more. You're just compromising with the world, watering down the message of the Lord just to make the people feel good and not giving the people what they need, what their spirit is crying out. But then when you go into prayer, you think God always supposed to say, yes, if you are truly in a relationship with God, sometimes you need to sit back and ask yourself, if God say no to you for a time, can you truly accept when the Lord says no? Some of you have an attitude of puffness about your, your gift that you think that you holy or thou. And every time that you go into prayer, that the windows of heaven supposed to open up and God supposed to give you the power and authority to just do what you want to do with the people and with yourself. Can you truly accept when God says no? Now let's go back to our key scripture. God said, go back to the key scripture, because that's when he told them no. If you heard the parts where here it is, sometimes even as a group of people, everybody want to decide to go one way. And God, and they like, yeah, we're going to preach over here in this city. We're going to do this. But you see in the key scripture, it did not. The Holy Spirit was like, uh, no. Nah. Then they went to another city and the plans that Paul had, the Holy Spirit says, uh, no. No, you're not ministering there. No, you're not. I don't want you to do the work, my work there. It's a good idea, but it's not my idea. It's nice all the plans that you have made up, but it's not what I said do. Amen. Let's go to the key scripture. I'm proving to God. He said no. Even when it comes to working in the ministry field. Some of you are doing things and God is like, no, I didn't tell you to go there and to preach and teach. I didn't tell you to go online to this, you know, virtual conference and, 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 and hoot and holler and give a word and pray. I didn't tell you go on that platform, on that virtual platform and do that. 
go where I tell you to go. Do what I tell you to do. Amen. Key scripture. As they travel. Okay, so it's a group up. See that? And that's another thing, leaders. You need to reevaluate the group, the core people that the help that's supposed to be for you. Oh, Lord, I must be talking to myself. Because I'm, I'm being transparent because I'm going through that now. And it don't feel good at all. At all. Because, see, I'm quick to cast my cares on the Lord. But there are some things that God is like, you know what, you too, tie, you too old for that. Tie your shit. Some things I want the Lord to answer. The Lord, like, you and I have been together too long. You know how to handle this. I've given you power and authority to do it. I'm trusting in you to make the decision on earth. Because I've already commanded it from heaven. You have a part and I have a part. Yeah, I I can, yes, when you are with me, you can do all things in Christ that strengthens you. Even when the people don't like you, and even when they plot to hurt you, and even when they come out their mouth and say they love you and their heart is far from you, you can do all things in Christ that will strengthen you. Some of you need to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. And some of you doing your decision making. Y'all are making decision making to compromise your life. God is not pleased. God is not pleased. I don't know where y'all get this image to think that every time you go into prayer, God's supposed to jump and do what you say do because you said it out your mouth. And then after you pray and talk to God, then you get up and go on about your little merry way. You going out into the world, going get on the phone with your family and friends thinking, oh, what I said to God this morning, he's going to do anyway. So God just ain't going to never forsake me. Really? Let me go to the key. All right, Holy Spirit. He said, go to the key scripture because they think I'm playing. That's just what he said. They think I'm playing. Here it is. The word has been here for over 2,000 years. God said, but they think I'm playing. They think I'm a joke. And I'm talking about my old leaders. And some of them who are up and coming. He said, they think I'm a joke. Go to my word. Because if my word worked for them, Peter and Paul and Philip and them, then it's still relevant for the day. Amen. Let me go to this key scripture. I know Holy Spirit is it's high up in here. Already. He said, as they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decrees decided on by the apostles and elders who were in Jerusalem for the churches to observe. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and they continually increased in number day by day. So in the beginning, they were doing what God told them. They were good. Together. That's why it's important God said in his word, unity commands the blessing. When you are unified, regardless if y'all are different lifestyles, but when y'all on one accord in the spirit realm for the kingdom, it will multiply, never divide. Amen. Uh oh, here we go. But then it says, verse six, now they pass through the territory of, okay, figure, figure and Galatia. After being forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in the West Coast of Asia Minor. Let me stop right there. So here it is together. They came up with this plan that they wanted to speak the word. That y'all, we're going to preach. We're going to preach the roof off in Asia. We're going to preach up in Asia. We're going to preach the roof off. We're going to set people free. Uh, No. The Holy Spirit said, and he took them another way. When they when they call themselves wanting to go to Asia Minor, Holy Spirit said, uh, no, you won't. You are forbidden to preach there. You ain't given no word, no scriptures for the day, no word of encouragement there. And then it says, and after they came to Messiah, they tried to go to another place. But here it is again. The Holy Spirit said, uh, no, 
You ain't going to do that one there either. You ain't. It says the spirit of Jesus did not permit them. You ain't going to sit up here and up here hoot and holler to them people and put on a show and be entertaining. Trying to enter, trying to use my word as entertainment to preach and teach there. Nah, no, nah, no, nah. no, you're not. Then it says, so passing by, the Holy Spirit said, keep on moving. Even though their hearts and they as a group wanted to just go up in these cities and just have a good time and preach to the people. Uh-uh, God said, keep on moving. No, you won't. You won't stop there in that town. It says, so, verse 8, so passing by Messiah, they went down to Troas. Okay. So they probably, they, they had a little rest stop in Troas. Then a vision appeared to Paul in the night. So they had their little rest stop there and Paul had a vision. A man from the Roman province of Macedonia was standing and pleading. Saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. See, they weren't thinking about preaching in Macedonia. Until God had to give the vision. That's where I want you to go. Not where you want to go. But this is where I need you to go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of you today are ministering on these platforms because you want to and you think that it's a good idea. But it's not what God needs to be done. In his timing. So can you truly accept when God says no? Some of you sit up here and say, you got a word from the I'm going like, I got a word from the Lord for the people. God say no, but you're going to go do it anyway. And just because you may get a reaction from the people that they've received, God is not pleased. Why? Because that's fleshy. And guess what? In due time, he'll show you that it's messy. And one thing you want to always keep in mind, leaders and believers, is to stay in God's timing on everything. God ain't saying don't go minister the word, but he'll let you know when to minister the word. God ain't saying he don't want you to help your brothers and sisters, but he'll let you know when to help your brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. I know it's tough. I am. I got the tiger by the tail now, baby. And for some of you that are defiant and you want to henpick what you want to do and hide behind your gift to try to make people think that you holy are thou and you're not. And you're inwardly being disobedient. Whoa. Trust me, it's going to catch up with you. What you doing now? You think you're doing it for the Lord. The Lord ain't pressed. And some of you keep saying you hearing from God. You ain't heard that. You heard your own voice. Because like the book of Acts, your actions is speaking louder than your words, honey. Your actions is speaking louder than your words. And God is not pleased. Some of you need to repent now in the name of Jesus. And for some of you that are mentoring. And yes, you better stop mistreating your flock and your people. With your words. And for those defiant followers and believers, you better repent. Because if you're not going to listen. And if you're not, it's a difference between hearing and listening. Because when you listen, then you obey. Meaning action comes behind listening. Especially when it's thus said the Lord. When the Lord has brought, when the Lord shows up in someone to help you. If you're not going to listen, you should not be under them. You should not be connected to them. Real simple. Don't be wasting people time. We don't have no time. I'm just saying. It's in the global atmosphere. I didn't even think we was going to go this way. I 
thought that the Lord was going to use me to pack us to something lightly. But no, he is furious. Because he's almost ready to come back. And some of y'all are not ready. Y'all think you're ready according to what you're trying to measure your life up against the world standard. And not against the word of God standard. And you think you're going into eternity. And you think you're going to have, you're going um, get through judgment day. But the way your actions going and how you keep grieving the Holy Spirit. You're going to get left behind. Amen. You're going to get left behind. You better wonder when you with a group of people, it says as they travel. First of all, y'all, y'all better check out your connections. Y'all better check them out. I don't give a darn how many degrees they got. What did I read? I said that in this book, God showed these people ain't had no degrees and stuff. And God empowered them and used them as powerful leaders. He accomplished, he, I say God accomplished this primarily through ordinary people. So some of you who think that, oh, you sitting under a pastor, oh, they got it all together. No, we don't. No, we don't. Oh, you see the Holy Spirit, baby. Because if Teresa, if, 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 if I can get out my playpen and just do, and, 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 uh, <clears throat> run havoc on what I want to do, it would not be what God has showed me to do. It would be to my decision and God's decision for my life are totally different. And we've all seen it because we've all had a BC life before we came to Christ. Amen. You all should have took notice. You should have took notes on your past, how some of you make decisions that is toxic to your life. Some of you can't even think straight on your own. But yet you want God to bless you. Some of you won't even include him. But you want to get in front of other people's and put on a show. You ain't got to do that. God is serving God is not hard. You ain't got to do all that. I ain't doing all that. That's too much work. I ain't going to be sitting up here putting on no mask, putting on no, no, no onesie outfit, no spiritual onesie outfit, trying to perpetrate like I'm all deep. We ain't got time for that. We at the end times. We ain't got time for that. We want to be all deep and stuff. And here it is. You can't even count. You can't, you can't even, uh, uh, help me. Holy spirit. Some of you can't think straight. Some of you can't even pay no bills, but y'all want God to give you a financial blessing. Some of you are wasteful. Some of you are greedy. Some of you are selfish. But then when you get in front of your church family or get out in the community, you are, you got all, you 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 got or you get out into the world or you could put on you could put on your clown suit for the world. Everybody got time for all that. And this is for not just the spiritual leader, for the political leader. If you're going to lead, lead, darn it. And I said it. If God gave you the gift and you have the answer to help his people, help the people and stop being so selfish and thinking you want to get a cut off the top. I don't know how I got here. Lord have mercy. It is hot globally. But those of you who are truly spiritual. And truly have invited God. God is welcome in your house. He is welcome to hang out with you at your job. He is welcome to hang out with you wherever you go. Wherever you hanging, washing clothes, going to the market. If you just sitting in the room reading, God loves it. Y'all watching cartoons together. God loves it. For those of you who are like that, don't you dare water down. When God says, okay, I'm, I'm going to use you today to call somebody or to do something to help somebody. Don't, don't back down. Don't get scared. Don't start talking yourself out of it. They, some going to love you. Some going to hate you. Like I said, I know I ain't for everybody. I, I knew that since, since, the, since walking with God. When it starts with the first group of people that you encounter when you come into this world. And that's family. 
Oh, I knew I wanted a <laughs> I've been hearing from God since I was six years old. I already knew that. He made sure I learned that at a young age. You ain't for everybody. And I'm not going to allow you to be for everybody. You ain't going to be a yes woman for everybody. The ones who are in right standing, those that I spiritually join you with, and y'all, and I have y'all going in the right way, those will you will say yes to. When I tell you to say yes, not because you want to or you like them. Oh, I'm getting in somebody's business now. Because some of y'all water down your relationships and your family. Y'all water down your uh, who you are with your family members, with your friends, with your mates. Some of you go along and compromise with anything because you want to please them. But it's not what God said do and it's not beneficial to the relationship or the connection. Oh, it's getting real up in God. They, they, he said, we, we're going to keep going. He said he's going to give me 15 minutes because it's, it's, it's getting real up in here. Some of y'all think people like y'all because they smiling in your face. Yeah, some of them smiling in your face and they plotting to stab you in your back. Why? Why are they trying to stab you in your back? Because they want what you have and they don't want to, they don't want to repent or change their lifestyle to get the glory that here it is you put time in building a relationship with God with. I don't play them type of games. Because see, my Holy Spirit, my God, he opens my eyes up real quick to those that, yes, I may like them. But when he opened my eyes up to, okay, this is their real purpose. They could care less about you. They could care less. Because why, Teresa? He says, their actions get into the book of Acts. Their actions has not aligned up with my word. They don't even live like I, I have been transforming you to live so you can be what I called you to be. When they are not in your presence, they don't even speak. Their heart is far from me. I don't know how Holy Spirit is. God is... Whoop. I know, Father, God is not pleased with his people who are called by his name. Some of you leaders, y'all think God is pleased with you. No, he ain't. He just ain't said nothing yet. But trust me, we're in the end times. He gonna do a whole lot of saying shortly. Keep paying attention. Some of you think you are discerning. You ain't discerning because if you are discerning rightfully, there is a humbleness out of your actions that will come, especially, especially when you know you're wrong. You will feel ashamed. You will apologize. You will make it right instantly. Some of you, God has revealed that you have been doing wrong to yourself, to your family, to the people of God, and you will not go and make it right. Instead, you will water it down. You will compromise yourself. <clears throat> excuse me you will compromise your gift just to please them because you are too arrogant and too selfish to admit that you are wrong and you will not accept when God says no oh I got the tiger by the tail now and he ain't getting away amen Amen. Let that sit right there for some of you who are just coming into the realization of the gift that God gave you. Some of you up and coming leaders and some of you who've been walking with God for a long time, but you've been stale and stagnant within your gift and within the office that he put you in. Let that sit right there. Some of you need to go right now and to repent and really cry out to the Lord and ask for forgiveness. And then forgive yourself. And then by action, get it right. Or some of y'all going to get left behind. I don't care how long you've been walking with God. Some of y'all already poppers. Y'all think that y'all, oh, 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 I know I'm going into eternity. I've been serving God for 50 years. I know I'm going. Okay. Okay. Time will tell. 
Time will tell. That's all I will say on that. Okay, Holy Spirit. He said, don't even, he's, that's another So he'll, he'll turn it into another word. Amen. All right. He told me, let up on y'all just a little bit. Enough for me to give y'all um, three reference scriptures. And some of you need to go back and read into the book of Acts. And also, I want to leave y'all with these with something um, I wrote, something I found and I wrote. When you as a leader, and um, when it comes to leading yourself and your family, and especially doing it the godly way, there is no success without sacrifice. There is no success without sacrifice. If you ain't sacrificing, if, if you're not being obedient and then want to act, to sacrifice, to do it, to please God, you, I don't care what your plans is. I don't care if it's a good idea. If it ain't a God idea, if it ain't God telling you to do it, no success is going to come out of it. A lot of churches have been closed down. Why? Because it was even though they were open for 20 years before the, before the pandemic, God shut it down. There, that's why there are some leaders, they can't handle this pandemic. Some of y'all are forcing, y'all trying to force to open back up your church doors. God like, uh, no. See what I'm saying? I just said it in scripture. And some of y'all being defiant. Going out here trying to buy another building. God is like, uh, no. No. You're not going to minister the word behind a building again. No, you ain't going to hide behind a building when some of you have done terrible things to people in the building. God, That's why God shut your church down. Because you're nasty. Some of you phony and you blind the sheep. Some of you deliberately blind your sheep. Y'all deliberately do it. But that's why I tell people, y'all better get in that word for yourself. I'm the type of pastor, no, you're not going to be leaning on me. If I gave you a scripture, I expect you. I expect you. When you say that you're spending time with the Lord, I expect you to ask him about what I gave you. Real simple. I expect you to do that. Don't do it if you want. That's going to be on you because the blood off my hands. Because I'm giving you the tools now. And then you wondering why you're spiritually crooked and you're not spiritually straight. Amen. All right. Got 15 minutes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Here are, and for some of you out there, please put these um, reference scriptures in the um, comments for those that may be interested and putting them in their personal studies. That is for those that really spend time with the Lord. Amen. Oh, I'm keeping my honey. I ain't nobody friend this season, I don't think. Boys, look. Who is? It's called. You, my circle getting real small. It's getting real. Boy, because like I said, when God elevates you and the rocket goes up, the boosters got to fall off. Getting the boosters falling off. Amen. First scripture. First reference scripture, go with me to Colossians. Because I'm going to read both of them, but I got to get it up. I don't have my, I'm on my tablet. Colossians chapter 1. And these are personal scriptures I read every day. Just as, you know, to keep it infiltrated in me as a believer and a leader, as a mother, as a sister, as a friend. Amen. To those that God sends to me. First reference scripture, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, talks about putting on the new self. Therefore, and this is the amplified version, therefore, if you have been raised with Christ to a new life, sharing in his resurrection from the dead, keep seeking the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind and keep focus habitually on the things above, the heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, which have only temporal value, for you died to this world, and your new real life is hidden with Christ. <clears throat> in God. That's a deep script. If you you know, you gotta really chew that one, even though it's a familiar scripture to some of us. But some of you don't put on a new self. Some of you receive salvation, but you still act like the world. Or you still act like what you grew up in. 
So that means you haven't really accepted your new outfit, your new position with God. That even some of you leaders, some of you make decisions or you pass laws and judgments and set protocols in your house that is worldly and fleshly. And it has nothing to do with God. You have not put on the new in, in the ministry field that you are teaching in or you or God has allowed you to build or those that he has sent to you for you to feed and build up. Amen. Amen. Because you got to set your mind and keep focus. It says habitually, meaning daily, all the time, not some of the time. You have to keep your mind and focus on things above. When it comes to your outfit, you should be asking God, should I wear this today? Should I do my hair this way? Should I drive down here today? Because you don't want to be a stumbling block for nobody. Everything. Even though God ain't going to do your hair for you per se. But include him on your decisions. Even though you may want to buy a new car. Include him on your decisions. Yeah, you can buy it, sure. You might have the funds. It's your choice. But trust and believe when you make a choice or make a decision without God. Guess what? You're going to pay for the consequences. Amen. Second scripture. Second scripture is we're going to first Peter. Chapter four. All right. The second scripture is first Peter chapter four verses 12 to 13 talks about sharing in the suffering in Christ. Some of you want things, but you don't want to suffer for it. Sometimes you got to suffer. Look what Jesus went through on Calvary. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal which has taken place to test you. That is to test the quality of your faith as though something strange or unusual were happening to you. But in so far, in so far as you are sharing Christ's suffering, keep on rejoicing so that when his glory filled with his radiance and splendor is revealed, you may rejoice with great joy. That's where I'm at today. It's just a test. It's just a spiritual test of the emergency broadcast system. It's just only a test, leaders and believers. So don't be surprised at the fiery ordeal which is taking place to test you, even from people. Certain people will deliberately spit spiritual spitballs at you to get a reaction. Because they want to test your faith, see if you really believe in what you are preaching and teaching and, and really believe in who you say you are. Don't even be surprised. Oh, I've learned that since being a pet. Oh, I like I tell y'all, I can't stand this office, but I got it now, baby. Go, oh, I got it now, baby. Because you only could get me one time. The Holy Spirit, my Holy Spirit. You only could get, oh, I got it, baby. And so some of you. When somebody do something to you spiritually, you all of a sudden act like you can't believe that it's done to you because you are a pastor, a bishop, or an apostle, or an evangelist, or a minister. You ain't no different than nobody else. You human like I am. You got red blood like I did. You ain't exception. You're not exceptional to the rule. You ain't exempt from it. So like it says... Some of you, you know, <clears throat> as though something strange and unusual is happening to you. But the thing is, you are in so far, you are sharing in Christ's suffering. Christ had to stand there and take that beating from those at one point claimed they loved him. One point they was with him. Now at the next point. When he got arrested, now they against him. See, you gonna hey, see Christ was Christ. You see, Christ did not show like you know what that's messed up. Nope, he just took it. Cause guess what? In the end, and even now, they still calling for Jesus. Those that within that moment beat him and hit him, oh, they calling his name. 
Their knees have bowed. Their tongue has confessed that Jesus is Lord. And guess what? It's going to be done again when he come back again. For every nation, every knee going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. So for those of us that we are being spiritually attacked, don't even worry about it. Because spiritually, every knee going to bow to you, the God in you. Every tongue will confess to you, the God in you, that Jesus is Lord. Don't even worry about it. Like I said, don't even be surprised. Amen. But keep rejoicing. Every time somebody do something wrong or speak something wrong and you ain't done nothing per se wrong within that moment, keep rejoicing. That means God is telling you, I'm pleased with you. Don't worry about them. I'll, I'll trust them, believe I'm going to handle them. But I'm proud of you, daughter. I'm proud of you, son. You are the apple of my eye in that moment. You are, in, you are with me now. I'm in you and you are in me. They don't like you. They don't understand you. They talking about you. Don't even worry about it. Because you way bigger than them. You are way stronger than them. Because you can take something that they could never take. Don't even worry about it because I'm going to make their knees bow. And I'm going to make their tongue confess. That my son Jesus is Lord. Whoop, there it is. Oh, I know that's tight. It's tight. God said it's right. Amen. Last scripture, then I'm done. I hope this is setting somebody's mind and spirit free. Because it's setting me free. Amen. Last scripture. Go with me to the book of Matthews. And whomever the son set free is free indeed. Man, and I'm free, honey. When you get set free, you better stay free because ain't nothing going to bound me. You forget that. No devil and no person. I'm too free. God told me I'm a free spirit because he's when God set you free, you better stay free. You don't let nobody chain you or compromise you or give you something or put you in a place where you got to dumb yourself down. Oh, no, we're not even doing that. You ain't going you ain't going to put me in a position where I got to I, I, I got to be something else. I can't be who God called me to be, not who Teresa want to be, but who God said I am and who I know who I am and whose I am in Christ. We ain't even doing all that. You ain't even going to put me in no cage. Y'all better rise up. Y'all up here letting these leaders put y'all in cages. Don't talk. Don't preach that. No, don't talk about that subject. You're going to make the people leave and we ain't going to have no money. I don't know how. Okay, God. Holy Spirit said, let's move on to the script. He said, because he's going to hit that too. Amen. Last scripture reference scripture is Matthew. Did I say Matthew? Yeah, because we was at first Peter. So I have three reference scripture. Matthew, help me, Holy Spirit. Boy, if you could see what I see. Matthew chapter 24. Ha, verses 12 to 13, real short. Because lawlessness is increased, the love of people will grow cold. But the one who endures and bears up under suffering to the end will be saved. Some of you have endured and bared up suffering. And the next thing you know, you cop out. Guess what? You ain't going to be saved. 
That's real. God told me to tell you. That's real. And that goes for the leaders. Some of you who are compromising your gift and you are compromising your um your uh ministry, you are compromising your flock. Some of you going along, now of a sudden you was for God and now of a sudden you sitting around worldly people compromising with these political leaders and governmental leaders. You ain't going to be saved because you ain't made it to the end. Because you done already, when when you were suffering, you, you know, in the beginning, you was on fire and zealous for God. Now you all watered down. So see how your end is going? So by the time the end got, comes, you ain't going unless you repent and change your ways and get it right with yourself and with those that God had entrusted you with to spiritually instruct and lead them. And let the redeem of the Lord say so. Amen to that. Because some of you are not. Y'all are taking people for granted. So. Those are your reference scriptures. Colossians chapter 3. Your key scripture. I'm sorry. I want y'all to read. It in the book of Acts. Is Acts chapter 16 verses 4 through 9. Well, you can read the whole book because Acts is all about action. That's where he needs his people because God wants to come back for a bride. And when a bride gets ready, it's about her actions, meaning she is prepared and she is showing that she loves the Lord, that she loves her husband her, that's coming to get her. We, we're, in that, we're in that era now. This is the end times. It's about action. All that lip service ain't doing it. All that hooping and hollering ain't doing it, ain't getting it. Either you're about the actions that the Lord tell you to be or you not. Amen. So, in conclusion, when God say no, we are sometimes tempted to wonder if he loves us. In reality, it's because he loves us. He sometimes say no. So, can you truly accept when the Lord say no? Amen. That's my conclusion. Amen. I know this was tough. I didn't even know I'm going to go that way. But God loves you and I love you and he loves you more. And I want you to win. I want you to win. Not in just ministry. I want you to win as a whole. All areas of your life. Not, no area in your life should be lacking. Your mind should not be lacking. Your health should not be lacking. Because God's still providing. Your household should not be lacking. So if something is lacking, it's because you better reevaluate and make sure that you're doing your part. Because if you are not doing your part, then God can't do his. And that even deals with healing. You ain't taking care of yourself and taking your medication and exercising and trying to eat right. And my evangelist talked about that last night. Then how can God um, put his super on your natural? He ain't going to put his super on no raggedy old uh, dried up vessel. Run down, beat up vessel. He can't use no, er no earthen vessel like that. And you sitting up here every day praying to the Lord. Help you. But you won't even get up off the table. You won't even exercise. You can't even breathe. Because you want to be selfish and be gluttony and be greedy. But you want a husband, though. You want a wife, though. You want a family, though. And I don't know why y'all getting caught up on money. That's about to go out in commission soon. Money losing its value. They ain't ready. God said, stop right there. They ain't ready for that one. They ain't ready. They, they, ain't, they ain't ready. Whoop, there it is. I done said it. Amen. So, let me pray us out. I think I've said all. I, I, I feel uh, Holy Spirit said, well, he said that's it for, for now. But he is not pleased at all with the remnant globally. And some of y'all leaders thank God pleased with you. No, he ain't. Some of y'all think. That, that's the thing y'all think. Because y'all thinking about, y'all thinking and looking at it from your perspective but you're not really asking yourself is God really pleased with me you ain't even asking him that 
God, is you really pleased with me? Am I really doing what you told me to do? And some of you God going to say no, because here it is. You still got an attitude against your cousin or whatever. And you ain't even going to make that right. Some of you still got art or, or, or you up here sneakily have an attitude or you sneakily pretending that you care and you really don't. I'm just saying. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said that. He said he's done. So he said, let he said, let me pray. Lord, because praying ain't nothing but talking to the Lord. But let us pray. Oh, God, please let your people and everyone under the sound of my voice take these tools and be serious about it and help them to straighten their lives out again. Because some of them, Lord God, are making decisions that's going to cost them eternity with you. Some of them are going to go straight to hell. You know it and I know it. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry for all that I've done. Those the decisions that I've made in my life that wasn't pleasing in your sight. But I thank you, Lord God, that through my obedience unto you and repentance and forgiveness for myself and others, that you've given me another chance to and you've straightened my life out again. Lord, help your people, everyone under the sound of my voice and everyone that may view this video to truly take a self-evaluation of themselves and their family and their friends and their connection and the organization and the churches that they are connected to. Because you are not pleased with a lot of this watered down God, the way they trying to water down the gospel of your son. Lord, I apologize on their behalf for they not know what they say or do. Lord, they don't know your wrath. They haven't experienced it, but you've given us the word to show us your wrath. Lord, help us continue to create in us a clean heart and renew in us a right spirit. Lord God, we thank you. We truly those, those of us that are truly spiritual and striving to build a relationship with you. Lord, we thank you for the angels that you've already sent out today to you sent out to encamp around all the married couples, all the singles, the divorced, the widows, the broken hearted, all the children, the incarcerated. You sent the ministering angels to minister to them, their spirits, to let them know that you want to straighten out their life. And you're giving them an opportunity to get their life right, to make a decision, to be with you and to not do things on their own but some you have already turned over to a reprobated mind and that is so sad because that means they will suffer whatever they decide to choose they're going to suffer it and you're not going to rescue them in the name of jesus so lord help us to really know who you are and to really evaluate ourselves so that when you tell us no it's not that you want to be mean and nasty it's because of your love and your faith and your grace and your mercy and your protection that you have to say no to us sometimes. And sometimes it be a season that you may say no all the time. And Lord, help us to just understand you according to your word. Lord, we love you and we praise you for it all now. And cover those under the sound of my voice. Heal them where they need to be healed. Deliver them where they need to be delivered. And set free where they need to be set freed in the name of Jesus. Give them a new heart and a new mind. Lord, give them a new speak. Let them hear what you hear. Let them speak what you speak. Let them see what you see. Lord, turn their eyes from worthless things and preserve their life according to your word. And from this day forward, Lord God, help us to be better than we was. If you give us tomorrow, help us to be better than we was the day before. We give all this to you now and all that you've deposited out through me today. Let us meditate on it and come to you and to reread your word and to act upon it and to be with you and do what you tell us to do in Jesus mighty and awesome name and all the people of God say amen 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 and those that are truly redeemed let them say amen hallelujah can you truly accept when the Lord say no something for y'all to think about Oh, it was something for me to think about. I remember many a times throughout my uh, journey with the Lord when he told me no. 
I was looking God up and down. What? What? But then I realized the importance. He is, he is, he's my everything. He's my everything. Because he gave everything. Everything was made by him for him. Amen. Let me see who on and then I'm going to let you go. Hey, let me see without touching stuff. Anybody on? I don't see nothing. I don't. Oh, the evangelist is in the house. Uh-oh, Prophet Clark is in the house. Prophet Robin in the house. Minister Rose is in the house. Oh, shucks, they coming up a little bit. They is in the house. Hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute. I don't know why. Um, I, see, I wish y'all could see what I see. Oh, shucks. Wait a minute. They is in the house. The Lord is. They in the house. And I know for those of you that I can't see, God bless you. And uh, continue to represent God well. And live. And love. And laugh. Y'all need to laugh more too. Laughter will help you too. Laughter makes you live longer. Laughter will help you with your decisions. When y'all trying to be all stiff and tight and deep, you need to laugh at yourself. And, and I'll take all that. Just like you look at Jesus. He laughed a lot. It's some stuff. See, you got to discern by the spirit. There's some stuff in the Bible. Jesus laughed at like, <laughs> I ain't got time for this. This funny. He had to, he had to laugh while he was in this spirit vessel. And, I mean, in this earthen vessel. To deal with them Pharisees and Sadducees and his enemies of his time. Y'all better laugh so y'all can last. Amen. Until Jesus comes back. Amen. Thank y'all so much for joining me. Also, I just have a few announcements I want to tell y'all about. About the group Soldiers on Fire for Christ. Soldiers on Fire for Christ uh, this Thursday. Uh, please come out and um, join us for prayer. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Minister Rose Jackson will be the prayer facilitator that night. And then Friday, Soldiers on Fire for Christ, they have Bible study for two nights. Oh, snap. There's no excuse. Some of you are so conditioned to how we grew up. We only went to Bible study once a week. Well, God is doing a new thing. Old things are passing away. All things are becoming new. Amen. So y'all might as well get with the program at these end times. Soldiers on Fire for Christ have two Bible study nights, Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And to be a part of it because we are virtual now. Yes, there is no physical building. You ain't got to get on no plane and train. You can get, you can be with us from the comfort of your own home. Don't let a button come between you and God. All we need is an email and all you got to do is push a button to join. Push that link and join us for uh, Friday and Saturday. This Friday, I will be the Bible study instructor, Pastor Teresa Vini. And then Saturday, Evangelist Von Setter Simmons will come back with part two. Y'all need to see her message from last night. I've posted it out there. I'm telling you, it is a powerful message only for the meat eaters and those who truly want to be what God called them to be. And also to really uh, strengthen your relationship with the Lord in the areas of your health and healing. You need to really listen with your spiritual ears to what she had to say. And so I know she's going to come back with part two this Saturday. So please come out and join us. All you have to do is inbox us personally via Facebook and give us your email address. We don't need nothing else. I don't need your social security number, your phone number, all that. Your ID. I don't need that. I need you to be committed. I need your address. I need your commitment that you're going to make time. God give us 24 hours in a day. You can make time to come and be with me virtually. Amen. Push the button. I don't want to hear no excuses because when you really want to do something, you want God to be with you. Now God has shown up as the song says, you want to be where God will be. Well, guess what? God going to be on soldiers on fire for Christ. Come on over there and be where God is going to be. at. Amen. Also, Soldiers on Fire for Christ has partnered with St. Jude, and we are raising, um, the God, the Lord gave me a vision, we're raising a million dollars to help these families, and so these scientists, so that they can really produce the cure to help these children, and Soldiers on Fire for Christ is only asking for a dollar per household, so for every member in your household, so that means if it's only two people living in your household, meaning you and your wife or you and your husband, then you just give two dollars. The Lord already gave me the vision and said, everyone on earth can give a dollar god said that see god traveled god is um 
omnipotent and omnipresent. He could be, he's here with me and he's all over the earth. He's over there with you. So he knows what you have. Everyone on earth can give one dime. And some of you won't even give a dollar, but yet you want blessings from the Lord. And that's not just for the leaders or believers. That's for the worldly people too. If you can't even show that you really are interested in really developing a relationship with God and you won't even give a dollar to help someone else, then why should God give you a blessing? I'm just saying. He told me I could say that. Why should he give you a blessing? Amen. So you can come to, so you can check out my page and check out any of the leaders page and click on um, the fundraiser link and whatever the Lord leads, you can give a dollar. That's the minimum is a dollar, but whatever the Holy Spirit says, some of y'all can give two, three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, and it ain't going to hurt your bank account. I wonder how would you feel if God was stingy on the blessings? I wonder how would you feel if God said, you know what? You won't even give me $100, so why should I even wake you up today? I'm just saying. Amen. And another thing, soldiers on fire for Christ, we don't see none of the money. I'm, I got to help y'all out because, yes, some of y'all been, you know, financially abused by leaders. Leaders has taken your money. Some of you have given your rent money to people and they've done nothing for you. Well, I'm not that type of pastor. This is, ain't that type of group. Those leaders over there, we don't see nothing. Or when you hit that button, the money goes straight to St. Jude. St. Jude to let you know they got it. Because they're going to send you an email. I don't want your money. Because my father takes very good care of me. I'm just saying. Very everything. God wants, wants me to have and that I need. Oh, my needs are met. My wants may not be like I want them. But those will be met according to his word. Amen. So he takes very good care of me. So please partner with Soldiers on Fire for Christ and helping these babies at St. Jude, okay? And for us to reach our goal because we don't want to be, you know, dragging this out to reach a million dollars because a million dollars is not even a lot of money. Just like we haven't even lived a year in the spirit realm. You have to live a thousand years to live one year. So come on now. So God is not impressed if you can't even give a dollar. Amen. Also, um... The women's panel discussion, I believe, is coming up next week with me and Prophet Robin Raleigh. Ladies, come on out and join us and sit with us as well. All we need is an email. And it's um, we're talking about good versus evil daughter. Why? Um, why is that so hard to do? You know, some of you won't some of you ladies won't forgive. Some of you hold art against your own sister against your own husband and family. Come on out and sit with us and get to know us as the pro the pastor and the prophet, but also as your sister. You know, don't get all caught up in our position because we have to use our position to make sure we keep order and keep things aligned up according to what God says. Amen. But please join us next um, Saturday at uh, uh -oh, 1 p.m., I think. I, I think the prophet on here say, yes, prophet. I can still see some words. That's the time. 1 p.m. for the women's panel discussion. And then also the last Tuesday of this month, every fourth and fifth Tuesday, Soldiers on Fire for Christ has a meet and greet. Meaning you need to come out and meet and greet and uh, get to know the leadership team. Some of you are connected to churches and you've been under certain pastors. You don't even know them. All you know is what they say, but you don't even know them personally. You don't know their personal views. I guess because they, you know, they, they, they too busy. They too, they too deep. You don't even know them. You're just going to take what they say face value. You need to get into the word for yourself. But also you need to know those that you labor among. But also you need to know those that are feeding and, you know, talking into your spiritual ear. Don't we let nobody just be saying any old thing to you. Giving you no ministry and giving you no sermon or whatever, no word. You don't even know who they are. You don't even know if their hands are clean. You just listening to them. You just eating it up. You just eating it up. You don't even know if their hygiene is clean. Just because they may come on this platform and, and, and may look okay in the face. You don't even know how they live. As soldiers, we don't, we're very transparent. So come on over every fourth and fifth uh, Tuesday of the month and meet us. The platform is open. We wide open. And God is in the midst because it says when two or three are gathered together in my name. See, when we gather, we gather together in his name, not in our name. 
We ain't, we don't do this for no show because we could be doing other stuff. But we, because we live and because we are spiritually connected and we all have a relationship with God, that's where we get the enjoyment out. We love to see God work, even in the toughest of people. Because God will break down the toughest of heart. You ain't that bad. If you so bad, then you can come and sit with you. And I don't care if you're a political leader or not. Don't think you too high above yourself that you can't come and sit with us. We on right from the comfort of your home. And you are welcome. Amen. I think that's all my announcements. And then, of course, next month, April, at the third, the third, um, the third Saturday in April at uh, 12 p.m., Soldiers on Fire for Christ again will have their um, men and women panel discussion. They're gonna, it's going to be a new topic. The Lord is giving me, we're working on now, and that the leaders, we're going to talk. It's going to be an open forum, so come and join us then too. Amen. So again, thank you all so much for joining me. I know, well, I, 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 did, I think I did good on my time. I hope that I, I wasn't deliberately trying to hold you hostage, but I came and I did what thus said the Lord. I feel real good about it. Um, and God is pleased. I'm so glad he's pleased with me and he's so pleased with the hearers, but he, he will be more pleased with the doers. So I hope that something that I've said and the scriptures and the tools that I gave that you are going to truly apply them. Don't say it to me to try to make me feel good. I want to see it in your life. I want to see the word in your life. I want to see what I've given you in your life. Amen. Talk is cheap now. Everybody can do it. This is about action. We're in the action phase now. We're at the end times. And we sitting up here telling me nothing to try to tickle my fancy, telling, trying to whisper sweet nothings in my ear. Nah, because I'm going to hold you accountable. I'm going to tell you right now, you come in my space, I'm, I'm going to hold you accountable. You ain't going to be telling me any old thing. Amen. So I love y'all so much. God bless you. I'm not sure when the next time I will be on. Y'all know that I love you with all the love of Christ. Charge my head, never my heart. Amen. And so some of you I will be talking with soon. Thank you again for my new followers and those new people that I have been connecting with and talking to. And God has led you to me. God bless you. I take your spirit, your spirit man seriously. Because guess what? I take my spirit, my mind seriously. I don't let nobody play with my spirit man. You ain't going to be feeding me anything. And I'm not going to feed you just anything. If God ain't telling me to do it, I'm not going to do it. Amen. So I love y'all with all the love of Christ. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed day, morning, noon, and night, wherever you are. Those all over the world, those that will view this video later, thank you so much for your time because you could have chosen to do anything else. It's 24 hours in a day and I appreciate and very grateful and humbly grateful for your time and your support and all the love and all the, you know, the cards and the, the encouraging words and the post that you send me i really do not take none of that lightly i do because you could have not even thought about me and i am so grateful for those that are for me connected to me and knitted to me amen so god bless you y'all have a wonderful morning noon night here's a cyber hug i can't get with these cybers but god is preparing me soon because i need to get with some of my soldiers on first soldiers so please pray for us because we will be meeting Oh, Lord, in person this year, sometime this year. Not sure when, but sometime this year. And I guess as the pastor, I'm going to have to, you know, God will launch me out first. But then it's going to be one big, you know, um, thing where we will all have to get together. Not sure where because we're all in different states, but God is going to do it. He said he's going to do it. So I trust him on his time. He's not going to step ahead of him. Amen. So love y'all so much. God bless y'all. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. I love y'all. I love y'all. Don't want to let you go. And I don't see nothing else. And I ain't going to touch. But I um, love you so much. If um, God leads you to me, if you need me, inbox me again. And please join us as soldiers. All we need is an email. Amen. God bless y'all. I love y'all much. And have a wonderful day. And stay out the TV so much too. And some of y'all are fully distracted. Stay, you know, come on. If you're focusing too much on that, that means you're not focusing on God. Amen. You're not focusing on God. Let's get it right, people. Let's get it right. Amen. Love y'all. God bless you.